welcome to week nine of American Literature. This week, um, I'd like you to begin by watching the video. Um, I'd also like you to begin by participating in a special discussion forum I posted for this week. It's just a check-in. I just want to I want to check in with all of you in this class to see how you're doing. I mean, we've been through a really really tough few weeks. Um, I live in Sonoma County, and so um, I experienced different fires than most of you experienced, but um, the catastrophe that our community has gone through is something that we will um, forever be changed by. Um, I posted a poem that I wrote in response to the wildf wildfires, um, in response to, uh, I was preparing for this class, and I read the essay, Nature, by Wal um, Ralph Waldo Emerson. And I'm gonna read that right now to begin our class. It's called, After the Seventh Night of the Northern California Wildflower Wildfires. Wish they were flowers. For seven nights, there were no stars, only sky muted by smoke. On the first night, the dry bones of the past rattled the eaves of valley oaks on the hillside. Then, raging, hot-throated wind stirred and sparked flames, until the mountain cracked open, red lava heart pouring down. A man or a woman is most alone when he or she looks at the moon-stained red. At the hillside, glowing hot as a stoked furnace, every house feels to be a single cell of the same beast fragile and ignitable, and the days drift on, safety looming off horizon, a far off ship, but so long as we can see far enough, we never tire. So, welcome to this week's lecture. Um, we're going to be reading less this week than I had anticipated uh, because I just want to ease back into this. I don't know what's going on in your guys' lives, um, but Please know that I will be on campus on Tuesday, and if you want to stop by, it would be great to see you. If you're not able to stop by, please just post um, in the discussion forum and um, let me know you're okay. Uh, this week we're going to be reading uh, information on Ralph Waldo Emerson, found on pages 178 to 181. Then we're going to read the essay Nature, found on pages 181 to 210, and we're going to just um, read over a letter to Walt Whitman that he wrote since we're going to be reading Walt Whitman pretty soon. Then you're going to be writing back, uh, we're going to have a discussion uh, where you write back to the essay Nature. So let's start with who Ralph Waldo Emerson was. He lived from 1803 to 1882, which is a very long time. Um, he was Harvard educated um, and he was really the first um, rock star of American literature. He influenced many writers who followed him, but most notably, he influ influenced Henry David Thoreau, who wrote the famous book Walden while he was living on Emerson's property, um, also, which also had Walden Pond, which um, is, is uh, the book's all about. Uh, Emerson was kind of trained to become a Unitarian minister. Um, he went to Harvard and to Divinity School, wasn't really a standout um, student, but um, when uh, he, he decided to follow in his father's footsteps and become a Unitarian minister um, and to lecture. Um, but for two reasons, he switched that career from Unitarian minister to poet and philosopher. Uh, the first reason that he did this was his disillusionment with religion um, and his tour of Europe uh, pointed him in a new intellectual direction. Um, after his first wife died, um, after uh, his, I think his third year of being a minister, um, he lost his faith and needed um, used some of the money from her estate to travel in Europe and um, kind of find himself again. Um, the inheritance from his first wife's legacy assured him of an annual income of more than $1,000, which was a lot in the 1800s. And this freed him to pursue a career as an author. So he, had, he no longer needed to make a living in order to support his family. 
um, he was able to just be an intellectual. So what we're going to be reading today is um, one of the most famous, famous essays in American literature. Um, and it's sometimes, for, for students, sometimes this can be a really tough essay. Um, I would strongly urge you to power through it, and um, I find it to be an, a beautiful essay. And um, my experience of rereading it last week, I went to um, Salmon Creek Beach in Bodega Bay and let my kids play in a place where there was no smoke and read the essay again. And I have to tell you, I was really, really amazed at how beautiful it was. To get you started, because really the foundation of this essay is set in the introduction, and to get you started, I'm gonna read the first part aloud. It begins with, um, nature begins with an epigraph uh, with the quote from Plotinus. Um, nature is but an image or imitation of wisdom, the last thing of the soul, nature being a thing which doth only do but not know. Introduction. Our age is retrospective. It builds the self cures of the fathers. It writes biographies, histories, and criticism. The foregoing generations beheld God and nature face to face, we through their eyes. Why should not we also enjoy an original relation to the universe? This is an important quote found on page 181. So the beginning premise of this essay is asking, why can't Emerson's generation ask, um, look at the universe differently than the puritanical ancestors that he is derived from? So remember that the way that um, previous authors, in American authors, had perceived um, uh, their relationship with nature was fully through um, their relationship with God, that God was nature and that was it. Um, and he's challenging that notion. Why should not we have a poetry and philosophy of insight and not of tradition and a religion by revelation to us and not the history of theirs? Embosomed for a season in nature whose floods of life stream around and through us and invite us by the powers they supply to action proportioned to nature. Why should we grope among the dry bones of the past or put the living generation into masquerade out of its faded wardrobe? The sun shines today also. There is more wool and flax in the fields. There are new lands, new men, new thoughts, let us demand our own works and law and worship. Another important quote found on page 181 at the bottom. Um, the idea that things, it's a new day and it's time to think differently. Undoubtedly, we have no questions to ask which are unanswerable. We must trust the perfection of the creation so far as to believe that whatever curiosity the order of things has awakened in our minds, the order of things can satisfy. Every man's condition is a solution in hieroglyphic to those inquiries he, put, he would put. He acts it as life before he apprehends it as truth. In like manner, nature is already in its forms and tendencies describing its own design. Let us interrogate the great apparition that shines so peacefully around us. Let us inquire, to what end is nature? So he puts forward in this paragraph the premise of the essay. What is nature and what does it mean to man? All science has one aim, namely to find a theory of nature. We have theories of races and of functions, but scarcely yet a remote approximation to an, to an idea of creation. We are now so far from the road to truth that religious teachers dispute and hate each other and speculative men are esteemed unsound and frivolous. But to a sound judgment, the most abstract truth is the most practical. 
Whenever a true theory appears, it will be its own evidence. Its test is that it will explain all phenomena. Now, many are thought not only unexplained, but inexplicable, as language, sleep, dream, beasts, and sex. He's talking in this, in this paragraph, he's talking about how science, which is, um, science is really, um, as we talked, we've talked about in past weeks, science is, is really becoming um, the new way of explaining the world. And this is a new acceptance, but it's not able to ex explain all the mysteries, right? Um, science today is is farther along, and there are mis there are still mysteries, right? But um, at, in the early 1800s, um, he's questioning the science's ability to you know take the the, the place of um, of religion in explaining um, the unknown. Philosophy. Philosophically considered, the universe is composed of nature and soul. Strictly speaking, therefore, all that is separate from us, all, all which philosophy distinguishes as the not me, that is, both nature and art, all other men and my own body must be ranked under this name, nature. In enumerating the values of nature and casting up their sum, I shall use the word in both senses, in its common and its philosophical import, inquiries so general as our present one, the inaccuracy is not material. No confusion of thought will occur. Nature in the common sense refers to essences unchanged by man. Space, the air, the river, the leaf. Art is applied to the mixture of his will, man's will, with the same things as in a house, a canal, a statue, a picture. But his operations taken together are so insignificant, a little chipping, baking, patching, and washing, that in an impression so grand as that of the world on the human mind, they do not vary the result. So that's the introduction to this famous essay. And I would like you to keep reading from page 182 all the way to the end of the essay, um, found on page 210, I believe. Yes, two, yeah, 210. And I'd like you to read this with a pen in your hand and underline things that speak to you. You will be using this in what you do um, later um, this week when you're writing your um, discussion post. Um, when I went through, I found a lot of amazing things. Um, uh, amazing concepts that I hadn't seen before. One thing that's really important when you're reading this essay is to think about near the beginning of the essay, Emerson describes <coughs> this fundamental encounter that he has, um, the, the fundamental encounter that um, between the soul and its sense of the limitless quality of its surroundings um, by saying this, standing on the bare ground, my head bathed by the blithe air and uplifted into infinite space, all mean egotism vanishes. I become a transparent eyeball. I am nothing. I see all. It's the idea um, that he puts forth in this essay that by um, looking upon nature without ego, you can, um, you see, um, you can see differently than if you look at nature with your own um, ego involved. So, I mean, there's parts in this essay where he's talking about how when he looks at a landscape and he sees if he's had a bad day, he sees it differently than if he's had a good day, right? We, we, we project our own emotions upon a landscape. Um, so I want you to read through this essay, um, through the first chapter, Nature, um, where he does bring up this idea on page 183 of becoming a transparent eyeball, right? And also that idea that, um, you know, nature um, doesn't care about ownership, right? Who's, whose land is owned by this person and that person. Um, and there's a picture on 184 of um, Emerson, friend, his friend um, Christopher Cranch, drew what he thought a transparent eyeball looked like. I think it's a pretty fun painting um, or sketch. Um, 
then you'll be reading uh, the second chapter on commodity, um, the third chapter on beauty, um, the fourth chapter on language, um, and then continue on to um, the fifth chapter on discipline. Uh, the sixth chapter on idealism and the seventh chapter on spirit the eighth chapter on prospects and that and read to the end um, where the essay really ends with a call to action where Emerson ask you to build therefore your own world and that's basically what we're going to be working on this week it's not a lot of reading but i really want you to give yourself a couple hours to read this as deeply as possible it will make this a much more interesting exercise as you read underline words or ideas that speak to you and um, you'll use that when you're working on your response so your discussion this week is just writing back to this essay. Um, I want you to go outside. I want you to be in nature. Um, be a transparent eyeball. <laughs> Describe what you see around you and man's relationship to what you see or woman's relationship to what you see. Try and use specific language. Don't just say, um, I'm looking, I'm sitting in the park and I see a bird, right? Tell us. What, you know, you say you see, you know, what type of bird it is. Um, say you see a hawk soaring on the thermals. Try and use the nature you see around you as a, to become, try to use it as a metaphor. Um, how is the river in front of you representative of history? Um, how it's ever changing its course and rewriting the land, right? Um, or, you know, think of anything that you see in front of you as a way to understand human nature. Um, human history, um, our relationship to nature. Um, uh, ask yourself, what can we learn about our current society by looking at nature? Um, Emerson wrote in a very divisive time. Um, he talked about a political climate where people were at ends with one another, were you know, fighting constantly. Um, we live in a very similar environment in our society today. What can nature tell us about that? Um, I'd like you to give this some thought. Your responses need to be at least 500 words, and I would like you to re respond to at least three of your, um, your peers' posts uh, by the end of the week. Um, your, your initial post um, is due by Saturday night, and your responses are due by Monday at 11.59 p.m. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I hope that you are all doing well, and I hope to get to hear from you soon to make sure you're okay. Um, I look forward to the rest of the semester with you guys. We will be, um, not, this class has not changed because we lost the last two weeks, um, but we will be continuing content through the last week, the finals week of this, of this semester. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys online.